Good morning, everybody. That was the overture to an opera called The Marriage of Piccolo. It's really a dream. And it's the dream of a young boy called Wolfgang. Nowadays, he is known as Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And his dream brings him to Seville, where he meets some characters who later appear in this opera that we just played the overture to. The Marriage of Figaro. Just in case you're not sure who Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart was, let me tell you a little about him. He was one of the most important composers of classical music of the 18th century. And in fact, he's considered one of the most important composers of all time. He was also famous for having been a child prodigy. A child prodigy is a child who is brilliant, who does everything, he's intelligent, can speak English better than me, can speak Spanish better than you, can... Everything he does, he does fantastic. Okay, what little boys want. One of the things he really liked was to sit down at night before he went to bed and eat chocolate, chocolate truffles. He loved chocolate. He liked it so much, we could say he was a chocolate What's this got to do with Seville? Good question. Well, once that, we have to remember that Seville used to be the most important port in the whole world. In his profession, he had access to information about social events and who was going out with who and who was interested in who and all that sort of thing. He was a gossip. Wolfgang told Figaro how much he wanted to try the chocolate truffles. And Figaro was quick to come up with a plan. He went over to a wardrobe. See, we don't have a wardrobe. So the next best thing is we sent him with his double base. Now then, if my young helpers will come with me now, we have to do a little experiment. Figaro found something. What did he find? Um, what's this? I thought I said afterwards. No. <laughs> always the same, always the same. I bring them a bottle of wine and what happens? <laughs> oh, it's musicians. Oh, yes, they're, they're starting to look quite alike, aren't they? Yes. Oh, very. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well done, sir. But if we look at their faces, you can still tell them apart, can't you? Okay, guapas. Well, guapas, on. Hey, right, okay. They've got to pretend to be uh, a, an oldish man, an old grumpy man with a walking stick. Not bad, not bad, but there, there's still something, there's, they're missing something, aren't they? They're still looking the same. Hold on. What have we got here? Okay, Blanca. Huh? You're not Blanca? Are you sure? <laughs> Thank you. Round of applause for Blanca and Sandra. That was great, that was great. Just, just, just walk, walk around the floor right here. Come on, that's, that's right. That's, oh, come on. Oh, oh, oh. Very good, very good. You got it. Okay, so let's carry on with the story. Where have I got to? We've got 
Okay, so now Wolfgang goes to the Count's palace dressed like this. And he arrives at the palace. That evening, Wolfgang arrived at the palace disguised with the wig, the mask, and the stick. He took a deep breath and knocked on the door. At last, he found the kitchen and went in. He found Susanna, the pretty young maid, giving the finishing touches to the biggest plate of chocolates, truffles he had ever seen. by Susanna with her broom. At this moment, Bartolo recognised Wolfgang as the guest from his house, and the chase was on. The dog ran, slipping on the shiny floor, yipping and yapping as he went. Susanna ran, with the broom sweeping in front of her, trying her best not to bump into the guests. Don Bartolo stumbled after, using his stick not to fall over. And Wolfgang ran, balancing the plate of truffles precariously. Round and round the ballroom they ran, Bartolo shaking his stick furiously. Is it 
They're going to play the whole piece. Now, when they're playing, there's two options. You could imagine the story I just told you, or you can think of your own story. Thanks. Yeah. 